This is the Toronto Micromarathoner. It runs RC in power 1202.5 11,500 kV motors on 65 millimeter props, but you can upgrade them to um, it's a three inch props. It uses a 18650 cell and it is in a semi inverted plus configuration. Uh, so partially inverted plus with these two motors facing down and these two motors facing up. Uh, the board I'm running right now is a 5 volt 6 amp all-in-one integrated SPI receiver uh, Crazy B F3 for my Mobila 7, but I would recommend an upgrade uh, to this to an F4 board uh, all-in-one and also um, you would probably want to have a higher than 5 amps uh, continuous 6 amp burst uh, ESCs for 3 inch if you're running 3 inch. Um, so this one right here, it does fly quite well. It does not have any uh, punch out. Um, I can give you a quick weight right now. Um, it should weigh around the same as the Reckon 3. Uh, right now I have a lot of additional weight because I'm still testing it. So I have a lot of stuff like connectors. You can probably drop the beeper if you want. You can even simplify the top plate. Right now I'm at 68.47 grams. If you want just the 3D printed frame, um, this is one of the earlier frames they have, and just the frame is about 9 grams. The canopy is about 3 grams or so, and this bottom canopy is also about 3 grams, but you can also omit them or design your own. The main idea here is this frame here, and that's something you can't omit. Um, this is all flat, so you can probably cut it out of carbon if you wanted to. Um, you can try doing that, but uh, I'm not sure how to do that. So I've flown, uh, I've, I flew this uh, um, drone here, the footage that you're seeing is with the LG HG2 battery. And that one is a 3000 milliamp hour, uh, 20 amp continuous 30 amp burst battery. But I've see, seen people run with um, the VTC6, obviously, and I think I may try the uh, Samsung 25R which is a 2,500 milliamp hour battery as well, and see how that runs. Um, basically, the flight characteristics of this guy are, um, it's quite agile. The tune is not perfect on the recording right now. I just wanted to show you that it works and test out the, the, the endurance, the stamina. Um, and in the end, I got roughly around 12 minutes of flight time. Um, I think if you reduce the weight, and you use different props, um, you can get better flight time, but 12 minutes is the flight time I got, and at that point it was falling out of the sky. There were two crashes in there, but um, I think the timer that I've set in the top right is for um, arm time, so you should be good with that. Um, I've seen the efficiency numbers for these motors, and uh, it looks like if you use the gem fans, 65mm uh, push-on props without the two holes, uh, you will get a lot better efficiency. Um, especially at 50% throttle. Um, but you can also use three inch. Uh, three inch, from what I've seen, you may get uh, worse efficiency, um, but um, you may get more power as well. And you will definitely want to upgrade the, the, the ESCs for three inch. Um, and if you do use three inch, um, you gotta be careful on the throttle. You may have to limit it because it may also exceed the ratings for the battery. So that's something to watch out for as well. So the nano long range is actually roughly around the same amount of weight um, and as you can see with this frame design it's um, it's basically Swiss cheesed or like g-stringed and it basically it's reduced to the bare minimum um, and with the nano long range I think you have a bit more room still to reduce uh, the thickness. Um, the rigidity of this frame is still pretty good um, and I would say it's quite durable actually. This I can talk a bit about dimensions so um, it's about four millimeters thick, um, and uh, these arms are four millimeters um, and about uh, three point five millimeters uh, thick, and so they are actually surprisingly rigid and um, will try to protect the motors. As you can see, it protrudes from the motors, so that's what I was trying to go for, trying to protect these motors because they look so good. 
So first, let's talk about what this quad is and what this quad isn't. So um, the first obvious comparison and the comparison that you've probably seen in the title of the video, uh, Reckon 3 Killer or something like that, um, this is not that. Um, that was clickbait. Uh, basically what this is, is it's an alternate frame design that you can um, try with it. And the goal with this one was to make something a bit different and unique. So I haven't seen anyone else make a in, uh, partially inverted plus configuration type drone before with two motors um, inverted and two motors upright. And the reason why I did this is because it's a lot more efficient with the space that you're given. And it makes it takes advantage of this long um, battery tray that is really hard to fit in a lot of these frames because usually the most efficient frame um, as you see with these toothpicks that can go 16 minutes at a time um, is the X frame and the X frame is uh, it is very efficient because you're not using a lot of frame for uh, for such a good flight performance um, but the problem with the X frame is that you get props in view and uh, with the dead cat you don't get props in view but I feel like the distribution of the weight is um, a bit different and it's not um, it's very common but it's not exactly very durable either uh, well neither is the plus but uh, we'll get to that later but especially with the nano long range a lot of people are having issues with the canopy um, not being as durable and um, and and basically it's it, it, I just didn't feel like it was um, as complete as it could be so I tried to design something new so the main goal uh, the main idea with this one is that with plus frames, since they always have the propeller in the front, and that often gets in the way of the camera, I was thinking maybe we can just um, mount the camera straight up on top of the motor and invert the motor upside down. And that's exactly what I did here. And it actually works surprisingly well. Um, the the frame does uh, not uh, get the camera in view. And uh, right now I flew with um, almost horizontal camera angle. But uh, even if you lower it a bit, I think it'll still be okay. That being said, these are 65 millimeter props. If you use three inch props, I don't have three inch props right now, so I can't test. The results may be different. And depending on the camera you use uh, with the field of view and stuff, that could be different as well. Now, the goal with this frame also is to be cut with carbon fiber um, or have a, have like a, a 2D shape that could be cut with carbon fiber. Um, I'm not going to cut this out of carbon fiber. I just wanted to make sure that if someone was planning to, were planning to uh, uh, cut with carbon fiber, they would be able to do it. And so this is um, the layout that, uh, this is an older version actually, but um, that's something that's possible. Um, with this frame as well, um, I want to be able to access the USB ports and also have it plugged in at the same time. Um, so you can do that with this frame. Um, the, so I've mounted this uh, flight controller the right side up, whereas with the Reckon 3 and the Nano Long Range, you have to do motor remapping and stuff like that to uh, and flip it upside down. But you can actually fit a USB cable in there with the slot. Uh, some USB cables do not work, some cables do. And you can also take off this bottom uh, shell here and you can access the USB port. Um, if you want, you can also mount a Cadex Loris because this is a whoop uh, mounting pattern. Um, so you can mount a Cadex Loris and you can point the USB facing up and turn it upside down and put the Loris right below the flight controller and lead the wires into the canopy. I don't know if the wire is long enough because I don't have a Cadex Loris, but that is something you can consider because it does have the mounting pattern. And that isn't really possible, I don't think, with the, the Nano Long Range because um, this is not as high. Um, at least that's from what I understand. I'm not sure. So you'll have to do some testing out for that. Um, this shell also helps it um, stand off the ground and so that will allow these propellers to spin up. Um, right in here I've used nylon screws. I would recommend using steel screws. It should be about 20 millimeter M2 screws. Uh, but uh, And you should probably use steel nuts as well. They are heavier but they are significantly more durable and you're going to need that because this is this stuff breaks all the time. As you saw I've, I've already lost two and I've replaced it with sticky tack. So that's something to consider. So no props in view, access to USB ports, uh, durability is also a really big factor. So I wanted this, um, if I were to have a head-on crash, I wanted um, the this thick um, PLA part of the frame to take the brunt of the impact rather than the canopy, because if the canopy breaks, then... Um, then your camera is going to go with it probably. So that's something to consider. And the frame is also uh, a lot thicker and a lot more durable than canopies usually are. 
Uh, I can give you a measurement here. It's about four millimeters thick. And that's all around. Uh, so that's what I wanted to do as well. I'm not sure if it's actually more durable because it is a smaller surface to, for impact. And um, that also will affect um, the durability. So I will have to do some additional testing to see how durable it actually is. Uh, the couple crashes that you see in the clips uh, that are being shown right now are, uh, there are two of them, they're both really light and they're both landing on grass. So that's not, but I've crashed before, uh, not on grass and it still holds up pretty well, but I just haven't crashed it super hard yet. So I'm not sure the exact durability of this quad right now. Um, but I do think it will be quite substantial uh, because of all these struts and supports, but uh, obviously nothing beats in uh, real world testing. So, so that's something to consider. Uh, another th uh, comparison with the nail long range and durability is um, with the frame is also weight distribution. I think the weight distribution is a bit better because with the dead cat, the two motors are almost in front of, uh, or sorry, they're barely behind um, the camera. And that allows it so that the props are definitely not in view, which is good. But also the thrust um, is, is uh, closer to the rear. And I don't think that's as good for weight distribution, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure how the physics exactly works out, but uh, I think this may be better in terms of weight distribution and that may give you better efficiency, but I'm not sure about that. So that, that's, a, that's a possibility. Uh, but most of all, like I said before, I thought this would just be fun and uh, something totally different. So if you want to um, change uh, change your Reckon 3 up and, and try something new, you can convert your frame to this and I'll post the STL files on Thingiverse and then you can try that out as well. So another um, thing with this uh, Toronto uh, Micro Marathoner is that I wanted to um, build something that uh, was very good on money. And w if you want um, long flight time uh, for cheap money, I would recommend um, you strapping four uh, gumstick lipos of like uh, 300 milliamp hours each and to one of those toothpicks, which Kebab did, and he got like 16 uh, minutes of flight time. And that's really impressive because those um, lipos are really lightweight and they also provide a lot of capacity. Well, the problem with that is that lipos in my area are very difficult to come by because they are basically only exist for the RC hobby and I don't have many RC hobbies stores around me and I don't know where else I can get lipos from. And if you ship them from China, you can get a lot of difficulties with them with customs um, and also they take a long time and they're also more expensive. So with 18650s, since you can buy them at vape stores, um, they're a lot cheaper and they're a lot more readily available. You can get them quicker. So basically my goal here was to get the most flight time for dollar, the dollar. Um, and that's what you get here. Um, I am currently using uh, in this clip that you see a, an LG HG2 battery. And that one is a 3000 milliamp hour, 20 amp, um, 30 amp burst, 20 amp continuous. Uh, but I see a lot of people using uh, um, Sony VTC6 batteries. Um, I find the Sony VTC6 batteries are not very good value for money compared to the LG HG2s, um, but uh, they may perform better, especially because they don't sag as much in terms of the voltage. Um, but I also plan on using Samsung 25R batteries as well, and those ones are 20 amp burst, th uh, 30 amp continuous, uh, 2,500 milliamp hours batteries as well. And those ones provide slightly better value, I think, than the HG. Um, HG2s, LG HG2s, but just barely, it's basically not noticeable. Um, and yeah, so that's uh, something that I really like about the 18650s is that they're easily available pretty much anywhere. And another thing with the 18650s is that they're a lot easier to use for goggles and um, power banks, and you can make power banks from them, you can make goggles from them, and um, you can put them in your radio transmit, uh, transmitter, and basically they give a lot, they're a lot more versatile, and they provide a lot, especially a lot more value for low drain devices. If you decide you don't want to get into the hobby anymore, and you want to sell everything, uh, you can keep those batteries, and you can replace, put them into your power drill or your vacuum cleaner or something, and uh, they're, they're so much more versatile than um, traditional LiPos, in my opinion. So right now we're still at a quite an early stage for this frame in particular as well, as well as the micro marathoner genre or nano long range, which is in my opinion not as accurate as micro marathoner uh, genre of, of drones. 
Um, but I have uh, added a couple um, small things that I think really help um, if you add to your Reckon 3 as well. Um, so one thing that I think really helps is using a battery pull tab like this. So um, um, here's a cheap battery that I, I use. Um, so you just plop it in and then since these trays are so tight, I find that if I just use this uh, battery pull tab that's just taped uh, around it and then put underneath it and then I fold it around, um, it's a lot easier to take out and it, when you pull it out, it launches the battery, but I feel like that's a bit easier than just yanking it out. And another thing with the, the Nano Long Range is it doesn't allow you to get the battery out too quickly, but with if you even if you don't use the battery pull tab, there's a little gap here that you can stick your finger in and try to push the battery out uh, of, of this frame as well, and that is, is nice to uh, have. Um, as you see, I also have white bird crap markings here. <laughs> um, I just took a, um, a chemically smelling um, oil pen here and I just wrapped it around or I drew around all my batteries for the positive lead because I find that this um, groove here is not obvious enough for me and if you put your battery in the other way around, you're going to roast something. So that's something to consider. And I also put it in the battery trays as well and for my chargers as well. So I don't screw up and uh, probably for the charger will be fine though. So that's something you can do for all of your drones if you're looking for tips um, for all of these types of drones. Um, you can probably add a GPS in here as well. There's space for it, but uh, I'm not going to do it because I don't think that's my thing. Um, and I put a beeper in here because these guys are really easy to lose and especially in tall grass. So uh, beeper, extra weight, but uh, you have room for it here and um, it's convenient. It's convenient. Um, if you're looking to win races and w get world records, remove the boot beeper, but um, if you're just doing casual flying, then uh, keep the beeper in. Uh, I had to use tape for the canopy here because um, I was not doing a very <laughs> good job of designing this frame. And these two pegs do not hold in as well as I thought they would. Um, you can leave it without the tape, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would just tape it around. But if you're showing it to someone else, probably remove the tape. It looks kind of sketchy. So talking about the future of this frame, so in the near future I will be um, painting a more finished looking quad because right now I have a lot of wires sticking around and empty connectors that are just sticking around um, because I've been doing a lot of testing with this obviously. Um, but in the future I will do a uh, spray painted um, version of the frame and make it look good, make something worthy of these beautiful propellers and motors. Um, and yeah, so that will be later on on my channel and I'll post it to my Thingiverse, my Instagram, and my rotor builds um, as well. Um, I'll have that in and it will look a lot better than it does now. Um, in the future, in, in terms of improvements, I plan to make this lighter and more efficient. I think a lot of these accents, like this strut here, may not be necessary, but I'll have to do some testing about it. Um, so that could be something that you guys can improve on or I will look into. Um, so I think this frame could be lighter um, than it already is. And I also think this canopy is a bit extra. I mean, I put a lot of effort into making it look like a super flowy design, but it doesn't really need to be <laughs> like that. I think you can find something a lot more simple and a lot more effective in terms of space and weight. So that's something to consider as well. And in terms of other improvements, um, I think the Nano Long Range does a lot better job of making a cool style that looks more effortless and um, more uh, seamless and modern and simple. This one's a bit extra. It's got like so many triangles and everything. Um, I think I can work on that as well and maybe make something more interest, uh, more more simplistic and more uh, appealing to the eye, but uh, we'll see. I think this configuration of motors also looks really, really strange. Some might find it looks awesome. I think it looks awesome because it's something different, but it also can look really, really strange for a lot of people. Um, so that's something um, that we can work on as well. And uh, finally, I think if we made it look more like a toothpick and made it more minimalism, uh, minimal, um, it could be a very good form factor for a toothpick. If we have two inverted motors here and two uh, upright motors here, and rather than putting an 18650, I think this could make a cool toothpick style design. So that's something that could be uh, possible in the future. 
Anyways, uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Um, this is a really fra weird frame design. Uh, I'll, in this channel, I'll try to post as many uh, new frame designs that are unique and interesting. Um, and hopefully this helped you. Uh, if you're looking for a good afternoon, try building this guy. Uh, transfer your Reckon 3 or build it from scratch. And I uh, hope you have a good time with it. Also, um, quick uh, note before we go, um, I also want to say thank you for uh, for uh, to be a Dave C um, for um, bringing doing uh, all these. I use the same circuit uh, wiring diagram as him, so if you need to wire it yours up, I would uh, refer you to him as well. And he did a lot of work, obviously, in developing the nano long range. Um, basically, this is just an alternate frame. This is not really anything different from uh, what he's done. This is basically just the electronics transferred over to a new and unique frame and hopefully uh, uh, he finds this video inspiring and uh, I was inspired by him very much so uh, thank you for for that um, this is this is not starting beef this is not a uh, uh, Reckon 3 killer or anything like that if you're looking to buy a Reckon 3 uh, go buy one and uh, support him and um, he, you will, you're probably not in the same audience as the people looking into this because you're probably looking for a pre-built quad, and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so that that's uh, that's that's it. Thanks. Hey guys, um, right before you guys go, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, um, I will be featuring a series called Designing Poorly um, that's coming up on my channel uh, right after this video. Uh, right after I'm done presenting these uh, this Toronto Micro Marathoners um, frame. And I'll be going through how I drew this, my design process for um, these uh, frames, and basically um, how I got to this conclusion to make it fly and all the troubleshooting I went through. So if you're looking to design your own frame or do some, doing something similar to that, um, I would recommend checking that out. And even if you're curious as to how I came up with this wacky uh, design or like to hear me ramble about random stuff, um, you can check that out and I'll be featured up on my channel uh, soon. Otherwise, you can also check out my past videos that I recently upgrade, uploaded from this new channel um, about a naked uh, SJ8000 or SJ Cam type camera, uh, GoPro Hero 4 type camera, uh, I think. Or you can see my ET125 type video uh, where I redesigned a uh, canopy for that. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you soon.